Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I am joined with uh, the Weebinator. <laughs> um, from my understanding, a lot of your content is obviously animated related. You do, uh, I think you have like two abridged series that I saw on your YouTube channel. You also do uh, fan dubs as well as just talk about, you know, certain topics that appeal to you related to anime and just media in general uh how are you today um i'm good yeah just woke up um yeah like always um yeah how are you though i'm doing great so uh i know i gave you a very brief introduction and i always give my guests kind of the courtesy to kind of um expand on that and i guess explain in your own words uh to my audience uh what you do and what motivates the content that you create um well i had a big shift in what i made before so initially when i started youtube i kind of just made whatever like came to my head like in the beginning i would make um like little parody skits of like whatever movie was popular like i enlisted these videos a while ago because i want i want people to see what i make now but I used to make um, um parodies of like infinite like Marvel movies or whatever is popular, and then I started making a bridge series. And since I those took way too too much time out of my out of my hands, I just decided to go for um for just simple like video essays or or two of that nature or just whatever I like talking about. And I obviously make it super over edited, so it could have that kind of um like silly kind of um meme type of style and yeah i I pretty much describe my channel just over over edited videos with some kind of meaning to them oh yeah. well i mean i i actually really appreciate the editing in your videos i think it's i mean it's obviously more than what i do where it's just like i go for just oh put up stock footage of something um yeah <laughs> But no, I, I guess uh, I, I always like bringing, uh, especially like smaller content creators on here because uh, I always like to kind of fill the gap in the stories that people have between like, you know, how they got into doing, you know, any form of content creation. So I guess for you, how did you more specifically get into it? Like, did you study like, you know, editing in like school or is this just purely like a like uh, a hobby if you will. um <clears throat> so when i first started i had started editing on my phone right and i was going to i was going to school at the time and i'm still going to school right now i'm about to finish but um i'm i am going to school for post-production so it pretty much everything whether it be editing audio and audio editing everything i want to get into all of that and so from the from from my own experience i i taught myself and then i also learned more in school and over time, I guess I progress and learn more stuff, and uh, that's where I got today. And I wanted to make these type of videos because um, it, I I considered it a hobby at first, but I kind of do want to make make some sort of a living out of it later on down the line. It, it it seems like a cool job, even though it's not gonna. I know in the beginning it's gonna be a grind, but I do want to make I want to make stuff that people watch and enjoy. Uh, yeah, that's always been a goal of mine, and I don't know. Like seeing my friends react to some of like the videos I make and how like how they always usually are in the comments always like saying saying stuff that they they seem kind of silly to others but I know they're like they're they're supporting me it just kind of motivates me to keep making these type of videos. So, oh right, that's yeah. always like the dream, you know, is to do something that uh, you love. Um, but I, I hope that you at least do enjoy it at least you know from like at least like a hobby perspective if it doesn't necessarily pan out in the way that you want it to oh yeah definitely yeah and i really enjoy it as a hobby even even if it doesn't pan out um i think well i i got started mostly from your newer content with um you know like you said like the, a lot of the editorial stuff that you've been working on the shorter form editorial um but i i did want to ask a bit about like your bridged work and you you doing the fan dub because i think you're um like the first creator that I that I have that is more I guess a part of that community I would say. Oh, okay. Um. So, 
I, I know like the big like fan dub or like a bridge series that like everyone says that they got into was I think like Team Four Star with like their DBZ series that I think is still ongoing. I'm not I'm not really sure. I've been keeping up with that, but I guess um how did you get into that scene? Um to be honest, I started along it started like maybe around the time when I started editing. I joined like this little it, 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 it was like this little group that would voice over Persona clips. I don't know if you're familiar with Persona. Uh, yes, I am. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they would voice over like Persona, like memes. And so um, I wanted to get it more into voice acting. So I joined the little group. And um, I thought like, like, I thought like the fact of like voicing something and may like with a, either whether I have a script or just it being like straight up the 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 scene itself i i thought that was fun like adding my own sound effects and mixing it i thought it was cool so um i had i had a plan to well as you probably saw that the first well the first bridge series i ever made was the jojo bridge but that one was like a, i listed that one too because it was really it was a really horrible attempt but that that was kind of like the start for me wanting to do more bridge series so from that i did the persona bridge and that one i is pretty much what well, my, well, a lot of people came to my channel for in the beginning. Um, that one, I the the process was that I went on casting call. I I um, uploaded the, the the characters that I wanted. I needed to be voiced, and uh, I provided the script for the characters. I kind of did it like you know, like I've I've heard um for Infinity War when they were giving out scripts, they were giving out scripts from um, two separate people, so they could um so they wouldn't see what the overall plot would be, and I kind of did the similar the similar thing. Just that it was the thing. The thing with these abridged series that they're really lengthy. It's a really lengthy process, especially for one editor. You had to match lip flaps. You had to get your your own sound effects. You had to mix everything. You also had to download the, the footage, and you had to make it funny and add like the over editing that I do. So, <clears throat> I guess I think the first episode probably took me about maybe like four months to complete, and. From there, I, I I was I was motivated because I saw people watching it, and I wanted to do another one. And I did I did do an episode, a second episode, but after that, it kind of just like brushed off, and I started working in the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen abridged, but that one got blocked because I don't know that the anime studio was really was really strict on that one, and I couldn't get that one back up. But I was really proud of that episode, but. If by any chance anyone wants to watch it, I could provide a Google Drive link for it. I still have it just in case. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that would be definitely awesome to like kind of see uh I would imagine like your own lost media of like, you know, content that's no longer available. Um yeah. so so I mean going back to like you getting uh copyright striked for a lot of you I think you also had like a re-zero dub that was also like you have to host it on like Instagram or something like oh, that, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I still had that one up on Instagram, but but yeah, that one I also had to I had to post on Instagram. Um I tried to get that one back up, but to be honest, I wasn't really proud of that one. That that one was more of like a a project I wanted to get done with done and over with. Because most of the voice actors had already, um, they had already quit. Like they didn't want to do it anymore, and I was I was fine with it because I, I wasn't really proud of the work anyways. But, um, I mean, it, it's still out there for anyone to watch. But that that pro that probably took me about maybe the same around t the same time that the first episode of Persona Three A Bridge took. It was probably around three to four three to four months. So, but. Like I said, these these they're still out. These bridges are still out there in some way, shape, or form. Just that they're just lost media now. But, but yeah. So, uh, so do you think that like going on? Because I know you've talked about it, like, like you said that you've kind of moved away from like the bridge series, at least for your own channel, into like more like the you know like video essay style. But um. Do you think, like, if you were to ever pick up, let's say, the Bridge series again, do you think that there is any way that it would be hosted on YouTube, or would you just not risk it and just move away to, like, some other platform? Um, To be honest, I was thinking of, like, doing another, like, either continuing the Persona Bridge or just, um, 
either making a new bridge entirely on my YouTube channel or uh, if not a separate one. Because I did I did really like the process. It's just that it took way too much time out of my hands. And for me, like, it's kind of difficult to maintain, like, either, like, either I make a small, like, video for me or 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 I just take, a, like, a year, like, a year to make one long video. Because for me, I, um... I work, I work and I help, I help out around the house because I'm sort of the head of the household here somewhat and I help, I help out and I go to school. So it's for me, it's kind of hard to manage my time with, with making a big project like, like how uh, the bridge were, or bridges that were, um, I just, I just, I just think that if, if I had a bit more time and um i wasn't in this situation i'd probably be continuing the persona bridge because i did have a script for it i was ready to make it but it's just the fact that um that i wasn't sure um who would i cast for certain characters because at that time certain certain um voice actors that i had for the persona bridge they quit or they just went, went offline from social media so i couldn't i couldn't ask them again to to um reprise their roles so I was I was gonna look for someone to replace them, but I was also gonna feel messed up just recasting them, despite them having previous work on my channel. So I, I just decided for now just not to go through with it. But maybe in maybe some down some time down the future, I'll probably make an episode three or just make an entirely new series. Yeah, it's pretty much what I what I what I want to do in the future. With the more creative. Uh... Like, I guess, trying to look behind the scenes of, like, these abridged projects. I know a lot of it is very much scripted, but, um, because, like, with a lot of comedy shows, you know, sometimes it's, like, a mix where, it, while it is mostly scripted, they do allow for, like, obviously, improvisation, and you have videos where it's even, like, a highlight, like, where you drunkenly dub over anime scenes with your friends, <laughs> and obviously that's, yeah. like, more improvised. Yeah. Um... So I, I guess with these like, you know, larger projects, like how much of it is strictly like to a script and how much do you allow for the freedom of actors to like, you know, um, come up with their own jokes or their own material through the, you know, while recording? Um, to be honest, I give them total freedom. Um, not all the actors like to improvise, but when when they do improvise, they 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 get they give a specific segment where they add their own lines to see what fits. Like for example, um, are you familiar with Yukari from Persona Three? Um. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> not ex like if you tell uh, me how the character looks, I, I like. Um, like she vision. she has like a she has like a pink um like jacket and a skirt, and she has like a like her like hair looks like I don't know how to describe it, but it looks like a comma. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, because uh, the only, like, character that, like, female character that I always remember, I think, from, um, I don't know, I think I'm mistaking Persona 4, like, Rise, right, is in 4, I think? Oh, yeah, 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 Rize, yeah. Yeah, Rize. I, I always yeah. call her Rise as a joke <laughs> yeah. to get yeah. other people's skin, but... Nah. Yeah, yeah, I, I know who you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, 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 um, but for for that, the actress for her... She, for the most part, like improvised a lot of her lines in that in that series. I didn't really. I just I gave her a script, but she added on to like the lines I added, and then she had her own segment. I made a like a separate video where um, where it was like it was like sort of sort of like those um like you know how TFS has like the like the the Hifel series or whatever like the one where they where like they they're like in hell and like show the villains doing their thing. And yeah, it's, it's like uh, originally animated, right? Like they don't use um, like uh, footage from the show, or am I thinking of another series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 that's it. Yeah. Um, it's something similar. I did something similar to that. It's like I just called it Persona Three: Bridge Lost Footage, and in that, like that actress, I just literally just told her just ramble all ramble about random stuff that you you could imagine, and she literally just ramble because. Like, the whole point of that 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 episode or that that video specifically was like that the there's a camera in the in the game in the game you could see like you could see like certain characters doing their own thing in their own rooms and she was wearing a maid costume in the game and so what I did is that I kind of just uh like paused the camera there and like and zoomed in a little bit so you wouldn't see the text box and I made my own text box and she and the and the the voice actor just rambled on and like just she basically just improvised everything in that video 
And you could tell because it, I, I couldn't even keep up with the subtitles because like at some point there was just like she was just talking about Santa Undertale and just I don't know. It was just it was funny, but but she had like full creative freedom for that. But but most 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 other voice actors did it like improvise some some scenes, but not a lot, not as much as her. Um, yeah. I guess. Hmm. I, I'm not really sure that. Uh... Because I don't know, like, the full history of, like, doing the these abridged and, like, fan dub series and how, how like, interconnected it is, like, with... I mean, I, I can't imagine that's really in, interconnected with, like, the YouTube poop series, like, with, you know, anime stuff. I don't know if, like... Because it seems like to have, like, a similar humor, but I think, like, at least in terms of editing, there's, like, more structure with the... Um, a bridge series but i i guess in terms of like editing like how i i guess how's your overall like, because you do also do you said you also do the editing for it right if i'm not yeah. mistaken yeah so i yeah. guess how is like your editing approach with that like how um how do you kind of balance out like you know them not make it like so like random that's like difficult to follow but to still like kind of have like humor even in like like visual jokes with like you know certain edits that you do yeah um so what i do is that on the script for each episode um whenever a character says a line or there's like a specific gag i just think about when watching that like when watching the episode just to see like what i'm gonna do um i write down something like either whether it be like insert meme here or like make this some like make this look a certain way I, add, I like I specifically add pointers for myself. So when I look over the script while editing, I just see what I need to what I need to add. And then if I see something like if I see something like that, I could maybe add. I just I just add it in while editing. Like I basically improvise during my editing as well. So I, I just I want to make it I want to make it as fluid as possible. But like, let's say like I, I well, I also want to make like a story for like for each for each bridge bridge i do because i do want to like be somewhat serious at the end because i do want to tell some sort of story at the end of the day i don't want to just make it a a complete like meme fill type of video yeah like a loose th collection of like skits or something right yeah yeah i want to make it i want to make it cohesive so so what i do is i just I, I make i do make it cohesive but like i obviously add my my bits and bits of editing and just make add little silly moments that won't affect the story but I, it de it depends on what I see in the episode. If I see like an opportunity to make to make it funny, like if there's a character looking at a screen, obviously I ch I take out that screen and add like a like a dumb little meme or or I make it like I make a character say a line and then I I make like I either like I remember there's like this old joke back then in like around like 2019 2020 like the Yankee with no brim joke. Like like why well, I made the, I made a character say that joke and like I just made it I literally like just put a Yankee uh, or a hat a hat that had no brim on it on the character to kind of go with the joke. So I I pretty much just improvise improvise while editing, but I also have a a format that I follow on the script while editing. So I go I I look at the script while editing and then add my own tidbits here and there. Um, it, yeah, and a lot of the editing is, uh, I mean, obviously it's reflected in, like, um, the more, like, video essay type content that you do now. Um, I, I think I, the first video that I saw of yours, uh, was the one that you talked about, um, how video game adaptations are the new meta in Hollywood. Huh. And, uh, I, I appreciate it myself because I also shared similar, um, thoughts where I think post, like, the superhero craze which i mean granted i don't think superhero movies are ever going to really die out yeah but i think like the big movies to focus on are going to be uh video game adaptations of course when you made that video this was i think before like you know uh, across the spider verse came out oh which, yeah <laughs> which you know fucking rocked in the yeah, theaters that, so that movie was awesome I guess has your mind changed on that at all, or do you think that uh, you still kind of have a point in general with what you're saying, like across the Spider Verse or otherwise? Um, to be honest, like now thinking about it, like you're right, like across the Spider Verse was really it was fucking good. Like I'm not even gonna lie, like 
That that movie, that, that, I, I would have sat there for four hours if I had to just watch the part three, but I don't know, like, I, it's just that, like, for Marvel specifically, Marvel Studios, they're, they're not really, they're not, they're not really making stuff that people want to watch. Like, like, they're mainly focusing on, um, on, like, either, either they make, they make us a, a superhero show about, like, a character no one even, like, asked for. Or they make, or they like really make a, a character nerfed, or they just make this like give them a horrible director and writing, and they just go with it. Like for example, Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, that movie, that movie was horrendous. They tried way too hard to be funny for Thor, and it, it, it most of the jokes were just kid like kitty humor, and and they just it just made Thor dumb. And they like I don't know a lot of like a lot of the the decisions that marvel studios make here right now is kind of horrible and then dc is they're making good movies here and there but like for them it's just like a random like hit like joker was a good like it was a good movie when it landed um the batman was good like it's just random random little like movies here and there that that make a splash but not not to like not to the certain degree that like movies back then like infinity war and endgame had where people were literally cheering and screaming in theaters for it um but i honestly like seeing seeing across the spider verse did change my mind a little bit because i i do see that like it, despite despite me saying that like they're dying they're they're not gonna go away but um but back then but compared to back then they're still they're still not gonna kind of like compete to how it was back then like the mario the mario movie did really good for itself i, I don't know if you saw but it, I, I think it beat um for, i forgot what movie it beat but it got like a billion something in the in the box office so far. It's yeah, yeah really very good for it. financially yeah. successful. Yeah, but I think the I think across the Spider Verse beat it beat it on its first day. Yeah, supposedly uh, opening yeah. weekend, I believe. Yeah, like, opening weekend, I think, uh, and I can't remember the numbers exactly. Like, uh, I think it was like 50, 50 million, and more the Marvel we had like thirty million. I think I'm not sure. Yeah, it was it was something like that. Yeah, um, but. No, I I think uh, I think I still do like agree. I think like across the Spider Verse is very much like an outlier, in the sense yeah. that you know it is kind of existing outside of the MCU. Although there have been talks that they want to integrate some of those characters into the mainline MCU, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, uh, obviously the big one would be Miles Morales. Um, I don't know. But, how they'd integrate that. Uh. So I, I guess I wonder then, uh, like, what is your, like, if you do see this future of, like, video game adaptations as being, like, the new thing for Hollywood, um, are there any, like, specific adaptations that you want to see being made, or is it just, like, just let them do whatever? um to i had some in mind when i when i made that video i was gonna i was gonna talk about that i was gonna make a certain section where I, like i was gonna talk about the adaptations i want to see but for one of them for first of all i want to see how they make god of war that, that one would be really cool to see and how they would flesh it out um hopefully they started off in the greek mythology not go straight into north mythology and not, like introduce our trace and all that um but another one i was thinking about was I want to I want to see them obviously continue the Mortal Kombat series because that's potential. I mean, like the original, the original adaptation for Mortal Kombat was pretty decent, and they even brought back like I don't know if you saw, but like they even brought back the actors from the movie to portray themselves in the game yeah. as costumes. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, well, that's pretty cool, and I hope they can make some some somewhat of a decent story with that. But um, also another movie, another adaptation I was thinking about is. Uh, there's the it, I'm thinking more of an animated movies now, but um, uh, Legend of Zelda movie would be pretty cool too. But I don't know how that would work. It would just well, I don't know. It'd be pretty cool if they if they do it right, but it can't it can't be the same studio that made the Mario movie though. It like I, I don't know. It it just be too goofy for me. But, right. Yeah. Yeah. That. That. Yeah. I, I'm kind of in like a similar line. I think uh, at the very least, it'd be like the same animation studio, but they would probably make it like its own, like canon world. Um, yeah. In that video, I think if I'm remembering correctly, though, like you left out, I think two, like of the bigger video game adaptations. Which is no fault to you. I think a lot of people yeah. do 
would be like for me uh cyberpunk edge runners and um arcane yeah. was it was yeah. it just was there any reason why you let those out like you didn't see them or um i left them out mainly because um i was focusing mainly on the live action side of things because i know the then um for for example well I, I did i did bring up the mario movie but but for those shows in specific um specifically cyberpunk that that one is um um people don't really consider don't really consider that cinema or don't just don't consider that part of hollywood but i wanted to I, in that video i really wanted to talk about hollywood and how they how they're like they probably see things right now but i do i do agree with you that i like those shows are really great and like i had a, i had a little phase when cyberpunk edge runners came out where like i was just like listening to like the, the i really want to stay at your house and uh I, I played cyber I played through cyberpunk when when that when that show came out and for arcane I, I liked it but it's not gonna get me into league I don't know um but I don't I don't know though like those I just I just didn't want I I, I would have added them but just uh not like I said my main focus was just on Hollywood even though arcane arcane did get nominated for a few things I'm not sure if, did, did it get nominated for a few things uh Emmys and, right I think yeah, it right? won an Emmy if I'm not mistaken yeah I right might be wrong, yeah though. I might yeah. be wrong. I can't remember. I, nah, I don't. I don't remember either. But I think for Arcane, I did. I did. Uh, I did kind of leave it out because I, I. I somewhat forgot about it. But then. But then, like towards the end of the video, I was gonna bring it up somehow in some way, shape, or form. But uh, I. I just. I just kind of forgot. But I would have talked about it even then. But Arcane was really good. But I don't. I don't like the the game it adapts though. Because I'm bad at it. <laughs> Oh, I'm also, I mean, yeah, I'm also bad at it too, but, um, yeah. I, I, I guess I'm kind of curious because I mean, in that, in that video, you know, you obviously talk about like the state of like comic book movies and, um, I, I guess to compare like your thoughts to mine, like, what do you think would be like the immediate fix it? Like, again, again, like taking across the spider verse out of the picture, like just focusing on like mcu slash dceu what do you think would need to be like the more immediate changes that they need to make in order to pull that audience back or do you think that there is any way to pull back people into these movies um to be honest i think they need to cut out a i think they need to cancel a lot of shows and movies that they already had planned i don't think anyone's gonna go watch the marvels there's i don't think anyone's gonna care about the um, the echo show there's a lot of shows that they just they just started blurting out that don't really connect. Like right, right now, the thing that they need to focus on for specifically on the MCU type of things, they need to make um movies that that connect with each other and that that actually have an overarching focus right now. Because most of the movies that I'm pretty sure we noticed that they don't even connect with each other. Like maybe one or two like shows or movies connect with each other and have like a overarching story. I think it's like Loki, Doctor Strange, and um, No Way Home. They they have some sort of connection, and they do build up. They do somewhat focus on the multiverse, and they're in their own form of way, I guess. But um, I think they just need to cut out a bunch of shows and cancel them, and movies as as well. And uh, I think they just need to make stories that people actually care about, and 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 either bring bring um bring back old characters or just um. Kind of just like I said, just focus on the on the multiverse side of things for now, for the MCU and for the DCU. I, I kind of have faith in James Gunn. He's the one who's like, like the he's in charge of the DCU right now, and I want to see if me like what he can do because I saw that he 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 did he did the Suicide Squad justice. I'm not gonna lie. And then Guardians Three was amazing. If it had came out around the time that Endgame came out, that movie would have done much better. But it came out around the time where like people. People weren't really high for for superhero movies, even though even though it did do, do good for itself. But it would have done much better on like the Endgame era. Um, but yeah, I think I think the DCU would is gonna. I think it's gonna be fine. Like James Gunn could probably bring it back, but they 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 should they should focus on bringing characters that 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 people are gonna care about. And um, I I just think that the that the MCU is just kind of, just kind of, they they don't they don't know what the the fans really want. They're kind of trying to appeal to a certain audience audience, but even that certain audience doesn't watch the stuff that they make. So they should at this point they should just listen to the to the fans and just make make stuff that 
or can complete your story and not just little offs like off brand or like spin offs kind of yeah yeah you see i'm kind of in the opposite camp here uh like i i think i think the issue is obvious is like kind of an uh, you know like you said kind of an oversaturation but i think part of it is due to kind of this need to commit to these long film phases and with that like like trying to maintain and keep up this like interconnected like universe like my favorite like marvel projects like lately have been kind of side stuff that like loosely and i mean loosely connects to the mcu like uh i don't yeah. know if you saw like werewolf by night oh yeah that i was really good. enjoyed um yeah. and i i think like you know a lot of because i mean we were we were saying that like oh man nobody's gonna like guardians of the galaxy back when it first came out right like who are these characters and now they're like one of the more beloved series in the modern mcu yeah that's true um, so yeah i i think to me it would be like it would be smarter for them to like kind of take like the star wars approach where it's kind of just focus on these loosely connected projects but not as a part of like you know a phase like or a part of like or in star wars case part of like a set trilogy but rather like kind of these individual projects um yeah i don't know that's just my that's my take on it no no i, I respect it to be honest I, I mean uh um like i do enjoy that side content too it's just that it's just that we really are like severely lacking on on like any like mcu content that's connected to each other so that's why i feel like a lot of people are complaining on that aspect but i do like the side content that they make like um there i mean moon Knight was pretty cool it was a pretty cool little like little spin-off thing that, I, that that came out it's just that people are people are no matter what you do people are just not going to be satisfied and and the diehard marvel fans are just going to want more stuff that are connected and then on top of that um, I don't know if you heard about Jonathan Majors and how they like the the things he's he's going or he's um allegated for. Yeah, the controversy with him. Yeah. Yeah. So they might they might not even like go through with like him as a character anymore. So I I don't you know I don't I don't know what the like the state of the MCU would be, but I mean if it if it's just like resorts and it just being side content, then I'm I'm done with it. I mean I, I still like superhero movies at the end of the day, but like. If I see something that's not interesting, like if I, cause I do read, I used to read comic books a lot back in the day, and I do know a lot of these characters. And if I saw a character that like I, I obviously know about and seems interesting, then I'll, I'll go watch it. But if, if if it's something that like doesn't really catch my eye, but people are telling me it's good, then I'll watch it. But if it's something that like no one's praising at all or just not saying anything about, then I won't watch it. I I, I don't know. I just for me, it's just right now superhero movies are just like. They're they're whatever, but um, I'll I'll watch them here and there. Just like a little, just like whenever I'm bored or just if I'm with friends, I'll just I'll just go watch it just to hang out with them. Yeah. Well, um, before we continue with our interview, uh, we have a word from our sponsor, uh, Salty Llama. Uh, have you had any issues with your laundry detergent? Mm, um, no. Yes, maybe so. <laughs> well, if you did. I would recommend today's sponsor, Salty Llama. Are you tired of lugging around heavy bottles of detergent dealing with the mess of measuring the right amount? Introducing Salty Llama, the ultra-concentrated, hypoallergenic, and toxins-free laundry detergent strips that are revolutionizing the industry. Their eco-friendly strips are easy to use. Just toss one in with your laundry and you're good to go. With Salty Llama, you can say goodbye to harsh chemicals and hello to a cleaner, greener laundry experience. But it's not just good for the environment, it's good for you and your family. Their hypoallergenic formula is gentle on sensitive skin, making it perfect for babies, kids, and adults with allergies. Don't just take my word for it. Give Salty Llama a try and see the difference for yourself. You'll be amazed at how powerful and effective the detergent strips are. Visit www.saltylama.com and order yours today. And don't forget to use code pos- podcast pasta at checkout for a special discount. Again, that's www.saltylama.com, promo code podcast pasta, uh, on with the episode. So... Okay. The other um, video that I saw, like, kind of more of this serious uh, video essay style that you've been, like, pushing in your more recent content is our Makoto Shinkai films, uh, Bland. Huh. And yeah. uh, I-, I guess I'm kind of, uh, like, 
curious because I wasn't able to like follow it myself, but like how, how was, how was your audience's reception to that one? Because I know like, obviously he's like, like critically a very beloved director, but, um, I, I, I do see the points that you were absolutely making in that video in the sense that his latest film, I didn't feel like as strongly about when you compare it to like his more previous work. But, um, yeah. How did your wider audience take that? Um, a lot of people, it was, it was really mixed. A lot of people agreed with me. I remember there was a comment saying that they wasted seven minutes of their time watching the whole video, but they didn't really give me a, uh, an actual reason why they even stood there and watched it. Um, but I, 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 I'm, from what I see, there's, there was a lot of people that argue with me, but it was an argument where I, we both came to an understanding of what we were saying. And so... I guess the reception was pretty good and maybe and many people think because I know a lot of people they they just they just see those movies and they're like damn 10 out of 10 or just like this is a beautiful movie they don't really think about the they don't really think about like the previous movies and how they all seem the same so in a sense like the the audience just thought or the like my the audience for that video just just thought that I was shitting on the video at first but then they um eventually um but then, but then they, when they saw the whole, like the whole video through, they, they saw my points a little bit. And then when I, when they were, when we argued about it, we discussed about it, they, um, they kind of changed their out outlook on it a little bit. And I, but, but don't get me wrong though. I really like these movies. I like, I, I love them, but I don't know. It's just like, just the fact that, that like we're seeing like the same thing over and over again. And this, I think Studio Ghibli sometimes has like that issue where like they make that, they make some like some of the movies feel the same, but they're but they're obviously different different settings, different like different plots, different characters. But they at some point like you could you could watch a movie and then think it's from it think it's another movie and you could confuse it. But I, I just wanted to make I wanted to make something that that would make people talk, and that the and I got that I got some people giving giving me um, yeah giving me either feedback or just talk, like asking me why I think that. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to discuss with people because around that time I was seeing, I saw Suzume like right, like literally like literally a day after I saw Suzume, I just I I just started recording the video and I I started editing it. So I just wanted to um, I just wanted to just start discussion pretty much for that for that for those movies. Um, so I, I guess I kind of wonder them because like yeah, the studio give like uh, Hayao Miyazaki obviously um there is kind of a uniform in terms of like themes that he explores and even like certain like character plots. But, um, I, I guess it's like more of like a balancing act to where, you know, you have to kind of balance that with trying to deliver like original stories and things like that. Um, I, I guess let's say if you had a chance to talk to, um, to oh God, I always forget how to say his name. Makoto, right? <laughs> yeah, Makoto, yeah. Makoto Shinkai. Like, if you had a chance to sit down with him and be like, okay, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I don't want to, like, put too much on you because I know, like, you're not necessarily, like, like, he's obviously the acclaimed director and we're just assholes <laughs> talking about, like, his films, right? Yeah. But, like, what would you, like, recommend if he, like, if he sat you down and he was like, you know what, I think you're right, man. I think my films are get kind of getting bland. What should I do to move past, like to like move on from my art to like elevate my art what, what would you recommend for him um i think he should honestly stray a little bit away from romance because most of the movies do focus on some type of romance arc that's one big thing that they should kind of stray off upon and actually um he should make a movie that's kind of um that's kind of different in a way like like i, I don't know like i want him to focus on a story that's um that's not like romanticized at all and also like he i like the i like how he, how he made suzume and how it was really supernatural and how there was like the like the the main guy turning into a chair and all that that was pretty that was a pretty cool concept and he should follow that because i know the that movie also explored um like old like japanese folklore he should he should incorporate more of that like more like um folklore from from japan or 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 any 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 type of folklore he wants to explore, he should focus more on that aspect and make um make a movie that's just just not always has to end in a romance or or to some degree. 
Yeah, I, I pretty much would just tell him just no, no, like to to stray away from romance right now and to kind of have a different cast because the the main cast always results in it being a a, a guy and a girl who are in high school. So it's oh, it's it always feels that way to me at least. How much do you think though him sticking with like these familiar like plot patterns is just like the fact that like his films like are doing so well and that you know it does kind of have to appeal at least in part to like anime fans who you know a lot of these romance stories kind of work at, at least the way that he structures them kind of work like well I guess to say yeah. I mean um, do you know what I mean yeah yeah no I, I get you I get you um well, to be on to be honest, like I, I said it in the video that, that I said that like whatever like the format works like he's what he's doing like it, like I mean people enjoy it, but uh, I mean he could he could always take a risk though like it does it does like even even it, even if uh, if he makes a like a slight risk like just changing up uh, how the characters uh, are at the end of the the story it it could it could still make him money people are still gonna love the movie because it's him. I think he built a brand, uh, like he built a good enough brand for himself where people will watch anything that he makes at this point. So no matter if it if it if it's really really strays or um apart from what he makes, then people will love it regardless. But that's what I think though. I don't know, but I'm not I'm not like a movie critic or anything, but I feel like whatever he makes now, it's just people will watch and will enjoy. Right, I get you. Yeah, that, yeah. um I think he's yeah at least built enough good faith that people will give him a chance with even a project that kind of deviates away from it. So I I am curious to see how he'll um kind of broadly move away from that, especially since you know um I feel like with anime like films because they're off they're like treated differently than like you know anime series that we are seeing a lot of films that like are well I don't know if he necessarily started like the trend either but like our makoto-esque in the sense that you know they're like these kind of like either like coming of age romance films or just like you know uh these like supernatural like you know stories and things like that yeah um so I, i'm curious to see if like maybe he'll get pushed out simply because you know it'll be like a, an oversaturation issue where like every film will start being like that and it won't like hit the same way but again we'll have to like wait to see yeah um, hopefully hopefully we'll see a change yeah, yeah yeah um but i guess kind of extrapolating larger from that because i take it obviously you're a fan of anime i mean it'd be insane if you weren't right <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is literally the weebinator so right this is just a know. grift for you or something yeah um I, that uh-huh but I, I guess, like, because uh, I, I, it's funny that I bring you on because I always have, like, a joke within my friends that I deny that I'm a weeb because I swear I don't watch that much anime. I swear yeah. I don't. A lot of it's just, like, <laughs> too long for me and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, I, I always seem to be, like, a vortex for, like, anime fans when it comes to this show. So I have to wonder, is it, like, me? But, um, no, I, I guess... uh. As somebody who watches anime, who uh -huh. obviously enjoys anime, yeah. um, are there any like wider issues that you see? I guess with like modern anime that you you'd want to address now. Um, to be honest, yeah, I was gonna even make a video about this, but I canceled it because I don't know how people were gonna react to it. But I was gonna talk about how Isekai is kind of like are like the bane of like that like the anime world right now because there's too much like they literally made i think they even made one about like that time like someone turned into a refrigerator that one was it was it was, it's a silly concept but there's just way too there's way too many of those and i think the 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 one that really started it all was re-zero and i don't know it's just that like now there's an oversaturation of like isekais there's um there's not that many good or original anime anime um plots coming out. A lot a lot of the things that are coming out are just mainly continuations of a uh, of like past series or just um either remakes or adaptations of whatever's popping in the manga world right now. Like Chainsaw Man took a lot of people like like I don't know like that 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 series was really 
it just it just made um everyone just start watching anime again and uh i know everyone's on attack on titan right now even though it's like split into like a million parts but i don't know it's just for me it's just i just think that the isekai genre just kind of just kind of became oversaturated and and they didn't a, a lot of studios aren't are trying to capitalize on on what ReZero made and well like um what's that and oh don machi or any of those type of series made they're trying to capitalize on that and then and whatever and moff studio mappa is like taking like they, they literally animated animated everything and also i think i think in in part it's also due to like how anime studios treat their workers too they 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 get they get paid they get paid like shit and um i think i think it's in part that that they um that the they're not making they're not making a lot of like stuff that they would want to make due to like how how like overworked they are and how and how um how a lot of studios are taking up a lot of projects and are causing a lot of other projects to get canceled but yeah i just i just think it's just isekai just um overworking of anime workers or animes um animators um uh, I think there's not a lot of good adaptations out there yet, but when when they do get adapted, they're they're gonna be great. And they're like I like I said, there's a lack of original stories right now. But yep. Yeah, and I've also had similar thoughts with like uh, isekai anime. I I think the reason why a lot of like, an well, an anime writers default to it is not only that it's necessarily popular, but I think it like shortcuts a lot of like the writing process in terms of handling you know your your conflict giving you like your point of view character because you know your point of view character becomes like your main character the conflict either is like oh they have yeah. to return home or they have to find a new home in this world that they're around and um you know the struggle arises from the fact that they're just you know like, like unfamiliar with their environment and things like that so it, it's just kind of like in easy shortcut and i wonder if that is uh, in part two because they are overworked so they need to find like these easy plot lines yeah. to write and i guess easy guys give them that opportunity yeah um, I, I think so too yeah you're right yeah i mean not to say that i there's obviously a lot of like i think benefits to like the modern anime scene the fact that there's more money in it now than there's ever been right which yeah, is kind of like a sure. double-edged sword. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess, so, if you want to see a move away from Isekai, and you talked about how people really resonated with um, Chainsaw Man, uh, oh. do you read, like, manga outside of anime, or are you just, like, just an anime watcher? Oh, no, I, 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 read, I read manga, like, outside of anime. Like, um, I think, like, I really got into manga maybe along... Um, like fresh out of high no it was like during high school i was reading um berserk and that's what really got me into manga because i saw that if there's art like that then there's probably way more way more art that's that could even compare to it so uh, i w i went on like i did research and i would read different stories um i got it super into um like as you see in my profile picture villain saga before the anime came out i also saw i also read on um, vagabond i read like like little stories here and there from Junjo Ito. I also read um I, I don't know if you're familiar with um like this this manga. I forgot the the author, but um his name is the, the story is called Bloody uh, Blood on the Tracks. I think no, I've I think never heard of it. Oh, um, yeah, it's like this really obscure like manga series about like this mom who's really creepy and really obsessed uh, like uh, obsessed with her son and want doesn't want to like doesn't want her to get harmed her in any way and she's just kind of like every time like he he does something that's kind of adult like she kind of just backtracks on it and like the way that the that the like the author draws them the the mom gives her like a sort of get, like makes you feel like the kid looking at her mom make like make you get scared at the fact like at like how like how the mom looks it's just it's just a cool story i, li I like little stories like that where they uh where like they they sh they use the art to kind of portray the story. I know there's another there's another um manga I recently read, um I am Hero I think, that that one was like mainly strictly focusing on art, 
and uh the the art itself told a story then there there there's barely any dialogue since uh, the the story is just resolves around one guy in in like in a post apocalyptic world and uh, i i don't know it's just for me like i i i like it when when there's um when they announce an adaptation i always hope and pray that they make they do it justice because they did berserk they did berserk really dirty and i i, I always hope that like that they like whatever's popping right now for manga at least I, I always want them to make it good and i know i know people are gonna no i don't i don't i don't know if you're if you read the manga for attack and titan but i know people are gonna have mixed feelings about that about that ending for sure um but yeah i mean i i, I read i read manga i watch anime uh just i, I just like obviously now nowadays it's kind of I've kind of cut back a little bit on it, but I do watch like the occasional like, like sees like what well, maybe one once in a season I watch like, like a show that everyone's watching and and then I read I obviously catch up with One Piece, I I catch up with whatever I need to catch up with and then I I get over get over with it. And Jujutsu Kaisen Two is a really good show in that that I think is getting its season two this year I believe, and now that that season's gonna be really good too so. I, I don't know, just manga and anime are really cool in general, but I just I just want to see change specifically for anime. Manga is they they they're doing their own thing, right? Of course. Yeah. Um, but I I guess since you would have the perspective on that, um, what what anime would you want to see next adapted, or what do you think would be like the next big anime or manga to adapt to anime? Um, right now. To be honest, I haven't. I think um, people would want to see Vagabond um, animated, since uh, I, I don't know. Since I'm seeing a lot, like on TikTok, I'm seeing a lot of people like get in this trend where people are having like their "I Have No Enemies" arc or whatever, and they're getting into um, into a villain saga because of it. They're because they're getting into villain saga. They're going into like the big three of like the sign in, like like series. They're getting into Berserk and then they're getting into Vagabond. So I guess if if people really want to see um like another sh- series similar to Ven and Saga, then they could adapt Vagabond. But the thing I'm scared of is that they're gonna they're gonna make they they're not gonna do it as good as uh, like Ven and Saga because they did Berserk dirty and I'm still never gonna forgive them for that. But um. Uh, I think also another series uh, I do uh, well. It, this is a continuation of a series, but like I hope they really keep it going. Is um, I, I want them to like at least remake um Dead Man Wonderland or Tokyo Go because the the anime the anime made them like it, it was an anime original type of thing, and the st- the stories for the manga themselves was really good. They they cut out a lot of stuff in the anime that could have made the 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 anime so like at least bearable to watch but they just cut out a lot of things and Tokyo Go specifically they mix and match random arcs and they they kind of just made people not care about the show and I, I don't know how they did it but a lot of people just didn't watch the like the last season it was it was weird but um but I I also think that Dead Man Wonderland should continue even though it's been like I think like maybe ten years already eleven or eleven years. Um, I think that's that series deserves like a second a second go or at least a season two. Um, but yeah, those are the the three I mainly want to see. But more more so, I want to see them like continue Dead Man Wonderland because that series was good. As someone who's yeah. done like fan dub work, I, I guess I should also ask about like mm-hmm. you know obviously in like the modern anime era we've seen just an expansion of course of like english dubbing for anime series to the point where now we could get like simulcasts where like back in like the 90s and 2000s that would have been like completely unheard of yeah um but i i i guess just your general thoughts on like that whole scene like um how how do you think do you think that these companies are doing a good job with how they're handling english dubs or is there like you know any areas that you think that they can improve on as somebody that has done you know am, amateur dubs on your yeah. own like free time right uh-huh um to be honest i think i think that they're doing good um i, I like i like the way that they handle some of the dubs but obviously they're not going to be as prominent as like the the original the original voices or sub it's not gonna be as prominent as sub, but 
I just think that they like. I think um, there was an issue with Jutsu Kaisen Zero, the movie, where pe- they, the actors didn't get paid a lot, and the movie made a the movie made I think um, I forgot how much, but it made a decent amount where it could have well paid off the actors well. But some of the extras got paid like a hundred or two hundred bucks, and I just think it, I just think that the this um that they need to focus on paying the the actors a little bit more to incentivize them to come back because um the i i think i i guess voice acting is like a niche a niche like um type of like work or acting type of getting um thing but i just think i just think that those workers should get paid more since um since they do they do put a lot of time and effort even though it's not physical acting it's still voice acting and you see that like there's characters in in in, in movies that like for example, like we'll go back to Marvel. Uh, Rocket Raccoon's voice actor Bradley Cooper. I mean, I'm pretty sure he gets paid like a decent chunk for what he does, and and those and anime movies do make money, so they could e- well easily pay off their actors. So I just I just think it's just a matter of just paying their actors well. But I I think they're doing good, but it's just obviously like I said, not going to be as prominent as sub because most people are like those like those like. The elitist, I guess, that say that that sub always will be better than dub, even though there's always gonna be a like the like there's some dubs that sometimes do portray better emotions for characters. Like I think the Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood dub, I think it, I think it's a bit better than the sub. Uh, I like I like the portrayal of most of the characters in that show, and um, I, I think they really did a really good job with it. So I, I just I just think that people should give the dub a little bit more credit for what it is, but. They, but like I said, they should pay their the the actors a bit more. Um, I I wonder. I I, I talked about this a little bit in my previous episode. Uh, that I, with Nina Hope, in uh-huh. that uh, at least the problem that I've noticed, and um, uh, well, I, I'm sure there are ways that you can alleviate it, but that you know you kind of get this thing where uh, even for me who hasn't seen like a lot of anime, I've noticed that like. With voice acting, while they are like very talented voice actors, obviously, um, I feel like you run into this issue where like you start hearing like familiar like voices across like different characters to the point where it's like you don't hear like a unique character, you just hear the voice actor behind it. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> is that an issue that like you've encountered yourself and, um, like if so, if so, has it has it bothered you at all? Because I, I don't know. For me, it's like, like it's no, it's not enough to like turn me off from an anime, but it is like very like noticeable, you know. I think I think one big example is Christopher Sabat. You literally, I, I he he's always he's like literally in everything I've watched. I, I don't know. It's just he has a stereotype where he voices the big, strong, like muscular guy. And I've noticed that he's in almost every dub. It does, to a certain point, like, if I, it, like, for example, if I'm, like, in a little phase where I, like, binge watch a lot of anime back to back, um, then, yeah, like, and, and I, and I do what if I do watch it in dub by any chance, like, I do hear his voice. Like, he, like, I hear him in Dragon Ball, I hear him in, and My Hero, there's, um, he voices a character in Steins Gate, which is a, a personal favorite of mine, and he's prominent there, too. He also voices and um, he voices a character in Fullmetal Alchemist. Like it's just they they do they do reuse a lot of like voice actors. They 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 don't really go for it. they they kind of play it safe and play and use actors that are already working within the company within Funimation specifically. And so I I, I it does it does um some way like kind of bother me a little bit, but I I kind of get over it because at the end of the day like um. If the if the actor portrays the character well, then I guess then it I, it just it just goes with it and it doesn't really bother me. It's the yeah. same with movies. Like if you see a character that's like, uh, like if you see a, a prominent actor that's like up and coming, but it's doing really good, then then you'll you you won't mind it as long as he plays the character correctly. Like it's it's whatever. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, I get you. It's just um, I I wonder too because you were mentioning like. Uh, I wonder if the reason why we kind of have um, this this feature of like English dubbing is because of like the lower pay for uh, voice actors. So there is always like they always have to like take jobs, otherwise they won't like obviously like be able to sustain a living off of it. Yeah. Um, 
it's just I, I I would just like to see like obviously an expansion in you know I think English uh, dubbing artists because you know um, as you've worked with yourself you've worked with a lot of people I'm sure have aspirations of getting into like the business of uh, oh, yeah. anime dubbing and you know I I feel like I wonder how much of it is like closed off to them because of like you know these issues. Hmm. Um. Uh, speaking of which, do you actually have any interest in getting into that field, or is it just, or is there just aspects of it that just aren't for you, at least right now? Um, right now, to be honest, uh, I, I am I am somewhat interested in it still, but it's just uh, right, like right now, I got really super into editing. Like, I really, I really, really like want to pursue something in like in editing, whether it be the, my YouTube channel, someone else's YouTube channel, or just movies. But I do want to get into the, like I would want to dabble my like myself into like a, I want to like do something in in that field, but for now it's just not for me. But I know a lot of my friends that that like I've had on the channel before. They already start, they already started like getting getting um asked to do voices and um like a friend of mine Brenna she she um she's already voicing in like in games and she's already um like voicing in small YouTube series that are actually taking off. Um, I like, I, I'd rather see them do all that. And then maybe in the future, I could have them work for me, like, or like work with me again, but instead I'll, I'll be, I'll be editing their stuff. And I don't, I don't know. It's just for now, I'd rather just take a step back a little bit from voice acting, but just do it for fun, but, and just mainly focus on video editing and sound effects and sound editing. Yep. Um, well, we are approaching uh, the hour mark, which is you know typically how long my interviews last. Uh, before yeah. I let you go, though, uh, I guess for any of you, anyone anyone from your audience listening, or even my viewers who might be interested in your content, um, what do you have planned on the horizon? I know that you're. Um, I th- yeah, at least you told. Um, they said that obviously you wouldn't be doing like necessarily the bridge stuff anymore. They want to like, yeah. if you continue doing content on your channel, it'd be more like the video essay, video editorial stuff. But I guess, mm-hmm. um, and obviously throughout this conversation, you've kind of told me of things that you have kind of had on your mind to do, but I guess just to formalize it in a way, <laughs> um, what do you have for the future of your channel and your content? Um, well, right now I want to, I want to make more and more like the video essay type of videos. Um, I had it. I was. I had initially planned. Uh, I was gonna talk about Spider Verse and how it changed the um, animation for the long term. Because it honestly did. When Into Spider Verse came out, it changed the whole like it. It changed. It changed the like how animators should animate for at least here in the in the U.S. For like, I mean, you probably saw with Puss in Boots how how good that movie was. Um, I want to talk about that. I also want to focus a little bit more into gaming. Like, I want to make like, I I, I made like a, I I know it didn't get that many views. It was a Resident Evil video where I did um like the hardest mode. Like I I barely beat the first chapter, but I want to like I want to make um make a small series where I focus on like ranking up in Street Fighter right now since that's like what I've been playing a lot right now, and I'm trying to get like to diamond in that game. So I want to make like a small little like series where it's just like road to diamond i guess and but with my little editing style and i I also want to make a, another of the like the improv thing with my with my friends where we we drink and we improv over the anime scenes again so it's pretty much just that the the series to to diamond and more video essays i guess yeah those would be the three main things i want to focus on right now well, yeah, and we'll all definitely uh, look forward to that. Um, but uh, for those of you who have joined us today, thank you so much for uh, listening or watching, depending on what platform that you're on. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can do so in a number of different ways. Uh, if you want to do a more monthly plan, I have a Patreon account where you know I have three different tiers. The you know with each with different rewards, all the baseline tiers. Uh, give you the chance to have your name read in the credit section here but since I don't have any Patreon supporters the section is blank um, but if you don't want to commit to the month long subscription plan to support this platform uh, I also have a Ko-Fi for one time donations, Ko-Fi also allows for monthly but I would encourage the Patreon more for that uh, I also still have the merch store so um, 
if you want to buy cool t-shirts, mugs, uh, with the new logo, uh, thanks to George Isaac of Nocturnal Essence. Um, all this can be linked, can be found on my Twitter account. I have a link tree with all these links together. Uh, the Twitter is at Podcasting Pasta. Again, that's at Podcasting Pasta. All one word. Um, P's are lowercase. Not sure it really matters. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to sh shout out where people can find uh, your content outside of, you know, um, YouTube and, you know, things like that. Yeah, um, you could you obviously could subscribe to me on YouTube at the Weebinator. Um, I don't really have a lot of stuff on. I mean, if you, I guess if you want to follow TikTok too, it's the same thing, the Weebinator as well. Um, my socials is just my personal stuff, but if you want to follow that, I guess on Instagram it's Alex underscore Weeb, but but the E's are replaced with threes because they for some reason they took they took the the E's for me that username was taken, but. That's pretty much all I have for social media. I guess Twitter too. It's the same thing. Alex underscore Weeb. And yeah, that's pretty much all I want. I want to shout out right now. Okay. And yeah, once again, uh, thank you to Salty Llama for sponsoring this episode. If you want to, if you're interested, you could go to www.saltylama.com uh, using promo code podcast pasta. Also helps the show a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you all for joining us and take care. <laughs>